I think we can begin. Thank you, everyone, for joining the session. My name is Olena. I am a developer advocate working for Ivan. And today, together, we will be exploring today Mastodon data with the help some of some of really cool open source technologies, OpenSearch and Apache Kafka. Um, if you are not familiar with these words, don't worry, we'll cover them as we go. But let's start by just describing a common scenario. Uh, in the modern world, we continuously produce enormous amounts of data, whether it is a activity coming from your favorite social networking application or maybe logs and uh, some metrics uh, coming from the application that you built, which I feel is more important, maybe not as exciting as social media. Uh, we can think of the data as water going through the river. And it's seemingly like when you stay there, there is no start and no end. And um, streams of data that are endless can seem a bit scary. But don't worry, we actually do have already for some time really amazing tools to deal with endless streams of data. And here, to be honest, I'm hinting on Apache Kafka, which already exists over a decade and is an amazing open source solution for that. But overall, uh, those streaming solutions are designed, first of all, to be scalable. So in case we have a rainy season for the data which comes from the applications, uh, then we are sure that the river will not overflow and will not destroy neighboring villages. And at the same time, we want uh, to keep those solutions to be scalable, so we, uh, sorry, not scalable, reliable, uh, so that we kind of cut that stream into multiple pieces and store it somewhere in the clouds. And we usually replicate the data to make sure that no single drop of the data uh, will be lost. So those streaming solutions are amazing. However, they are uh, have their limitations, and I'm not so good at uh, analytics and search. And logically, it's indeed pretty tricky uh, to find some particular fish in the water that is constantly moving. And at the same time, so it's difficult to run complex aggregations and com uh, computations and analytics when the data is constantly changing. That's why for that, it's way better to rely on a tool that is actually designed for those search and analytics. Um, and uh, here I'm hinting at open source solution, open search. Uh, but to use those, uh, we will need to bring our data from the river into some kind of a, a reservoir. Uh, using some kind of a waterfall, so that once we have the data coming into a reservoir, uh, we can find what exactly we are looking for. And today, we are here, we'll be looking at the uh, data coming from Mastodon. And we will explore what exactly happened in there, and we will answer uh, the most important question, uh, which I feel we have. What do users of Mastodon prefer, cats or dogs? Or in case you really need a more valid reason to stay in the session, uh, you will learn how to explore streaming data and analyze it on the flight with the open source tools. And even though I will be using Mastodon, the same can be applicable for Twitter logs or metrics from your um, backend applications or any other uh, streams of data. So now about Mastodon. And maybe you're sitting there and wondering why I am talking about this fluffy, cute animal. Um, so in this context, Mastodon is an open source not networking software for microblogging. And here you might be familiar with um, such social media platforms as Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. They are a single network 
applications, they're kind of like those single planets where everything is more or less can be interconnected. So Mastodon is kind of different because it's a world with multiple planets uh, that are independent servers, which makes it actually a federated platform, a fully decentralized system. And when it comes to functionality, it uh, closely resembles Twitter. So you can uh, read the timeline, you can post your own messages, you can reply to other users, you can get into a fight with other users about some meaningless topics. So everything which you can do on Twitter, you can do on Mastodon. Um, and today, we'll use Mastodon as an example uh, and make a showcase for data exploration. And we'll use a number of building blocks, and you can think of them as, um, uh, as Lego blocks. My goal was to have uh, open source technology, which is kind of easily pluggable, so that we can uh, do aggregations and visualizations uh, with almost no code involved. But don't worry, I know we, here we have a lot of developers, we will have some code. Uh, and our plan, will look like this. We will start by bringing uh, the data from Mastodon. We will flow the data into Apache Kafka, into a stream processing platform. And this will be our river going. And we'll use Node.js, and in case you are not big fans of JavaScript, as JavaScript, then I will not judge you. Uh, you can use any other language if you want. As I said, it's kind of like Lego blocks which you can exchange. Um, then once we have the data flowing uh, from Mastodon uh, uh, into Apache Kafka, we will bring the data into OpenSearch uh, with the help of Kafka Connect. Uh, and once the data is on in OpenSearch, we will be able to use uh, built-in uh, OpenSearch uh, capabilities with OpenSearch dashboards to visualize that stuff. So that's our plan. Now let's go step by step. So I also explain those technologies in a bit more details. So step number one, capturing the data. So when I started playing with Mastodon, I was actually quite impressed how amazing their API is and how good is their documentation. Um, and this is uh, uh, what they have in the docs. They explain how Mastodon works, what kind of requests you can make, how you need to authenticate to read the data, uh, what kind of parameters you need to send. So everything which you need to know to send the requests to Mastodon servers. We will be interested in dealing with the public data, so the federated timeline, uh, which we are going to read. And um, technically speaking, we can just make a curl request and send it, and we will start getting the data. So it will be like blocks of new updates from Mastodon uh, timeline coming. And again, technically, we can take the data, uh, parse it, make sense out of it, and start putting uh, into the destination place where we want to have it for analysis. And that was my initial plan, but soon I realized that uh, Mastodon is way better than that. There are plenty of libraries which are already available for Mastodon. And I am playing with JavaScript here, uh, and there are like already five libraries for JavaScript, but if you, again, prefer some other language, like Java or, I don't know, PHP or whatever, you can find that language most probably here as well. So we will be using the library to uh, grab the data from Mastodon public timeline. What you will need for this is one extra thing. You will need to authenticate, you need the access token to start shooting the data. Um, actually, that's pretty new stuff because a couple of months ago when I was still playing with the data, I didn't really need that, but apparently there is limits to freedom you, have, you can have at Mastodon. So right now you, uh, to stream the data, you need to have access token. And that you can grab in your uh, 
um, account. Uh, once you're registered with Mastodon, and this is my Mastodon social account, and there is a development section where you can create a new application, uh, specify what exactly you are going to do with it, or like what kind of permissions you need, and then you will get a string uh, which will be access token. Uh, and then you can use that access token uh, to send the requests to Mastodon server. Um, for example, with code. And talking about the code, I uh, made a very small repository with the functionality which we will need to bring the data from uh, Mastodon into Apache Kafka. So here, uh, it's a Node.js project. Um, uh, you will need to provide information about your Apache Kafka cluster, how exactly to authenticate to it, uh, and then you will uh, need also the uh, access token for Mastodon. Uh, and there are two files. One is to stream the data from Mastodon, and another one to produce the data into uh, Apache Kafka. So, um, it's pretty simple, but let me just kind of share with you step by step what exactly is happening here. And this is a QR code for that GitHub repository in case you are interested. So the first step is to grab the data from Mastodon. And here we are relying on one of the libraries for JavaScript. And the first thing we need to do is to log in, to authenticate, to start bringing the data. And here we specify the server which we are using. Um, I'm using Mastodon Social and the access token which I uh, grabbed from my account. Once we logged in, we can create a stream and we are going to stream the public timeline. And once we have the stream, we can subscribe to events to start reading the data which is coming. And here we we start getting the statuses, uh, and I'm doing this console log, uh, but technically at this point of time, we can do whatever we need to do with that information. Um, I'm using a bit of JavaScript magic and adding the callback, so whoever is using this module can grab that information via the callback. Uh, so, and this is kind of enough for us to start reading the data. Now, what we want to do with the data is to put it into Apache Kafka topic. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is step number two, uh, meet Apache Kafka. How many of you are familiar with Apache Kafka? Could you? It's actually, we have plenty of hands. That's, that's cool. Don't worry if you are not, because I, I will do a very, very quick intro. Um, so yeah, so Apache Kafka is a stream processing platform. But you also might be wondering, why do we need it here? Technically, we can grab the data from Mastodon and push it directly into OpenSearch. And it's a valid question. And technically, probably for a small amount of data which comes like this, that will be totally sufficient. However, uh, we still, like when we have a stream of data, and we have significant data volumes coming from some source, if we try to push it directly, we might overwhel overwhelm our destination. So uh, open search, because we are going to push it. It's not like open search says, okay, I can get this amount of data and give me more. So like when it can process it gradually. So if we will be pushing, we have this risk that Open search is like, hey, wait, wait a second, I can't really deal with that amount of data if you are giving it so much. Um, and the second issue is, so you can technically, uh, on the, on the uh, compute side where we get in the data, you can create batches and then send those to open search. But what happens if the system goes down? or we have networking issues. So you will lose the data. So not to lose the data, you're like, OK, can I replicate it and store it somewhere? And then you start thinking how to make all this thing working. And technically, you will be just replicating what Apache Kafka can do uh, for the sake of not of having this secure mechanism where the data is stored somewhere in the middle. And then uh, OpenSearch can pull the data how much it can process, and we at the same time pushing all the new data. And the data also is replicated. So that's why we are using Apache Kafka. 
And uh, for those of you who are not familiar with Apache Kafka, uh, let me just give you a very, very brief introduction. So Apache Kafka helps with uh, transportation of records across your multiple systems. Uh, it can be uh, um, some microservices, can be IoT devices, or can be any other modules of your uh, system. And it works like this. On one side, we have producers, and they bring new data. Um, it can be that maybe there is an IoT device here, and it measures the temperature of the room and then sends that information to the cluster. Or it can be that we have a module which captures the click in the web interface and then sends the data into the cluster. Or in our case, the producer will be pushing information about every new activity um, coming from Mastodon public timeline. Uh, and then this data, which is produced, goes into a topic. For simplicity, you can think about a topic as a table. And each record is stored in that topic persistently. And this word persistently is quite important because this is what distinguishes Apache Kafka uh, from many other uh, messaging or queuing systems. Because not only it will store the data on the brokers, but also it, uh, Apache Kafka will replicate the data. So in case of some unfortunate events, we are not going to lose anything which has been uh, in our river. Uh, and the data then can be consumed by multiple applications. Uh, it can be actually processed in parallel if you need that, or it can be consumed by multiple applications which will even approach the data from different angles if they need to do different stuff with the data. So we have this 360 view on, on what is happening with the data. Uh, so this is Apache Kafka, and just that you don't think it's an abstract thing, uh, it's, it's a bunch of uh, uh, data which is stored on the server somewhere in the data centers. So my, this is my uh, cluster, it looks like this. So the, I have the address, I have the port which I'm accessing, a bunch of certificates which I need to establish a secure connection. Um, I am accessing it, uh, like, so I allow to access it through public internet. I could have used VPC. So there is a bunch of different properties um, of the cluster which I can use. And so we are bringing the data from Mastodon. So the data is, uh, we are capturing it, and our uh, cluster is somewhere in the data center. So we need uh, to let know our producer where exactly the cluster is located and how to securely connect to that cluster. And this is what I'm doing in the... Um, uh, producer, I'm specifying exactly how to establish that connection. And then once we have the producer object uh, created, we can start it and we can subscribe to multiple different events, out of which I think the one important for us is like when the producer says, I am ready to start sending the data, then uh, what we do, we use our master stream a module which we created before that. Uh, we will use the callback function and start getting all the status objects coming from Mastodon. And we are producing those into Apache Kafka topic, which has the name Mastodon. Um, we send to that their status and provide some other par parameters which are less important. Uh, but in general, this is uh, what we need to start bringing the data from Mastodon into Apache Kafka. Uh, and uh, on uh, Apache Kafka site, um, I have one of the, uh, so I can go and check the uh, topic information. Um, if you are using Apache Kafka locally, this will look a bit differently because this is Ivan for Apache Kafka. Uh, but you similarly can check what is the last offset, so how many messages you have. And I have almost one million records there. Um, so now we have 
data coming from Mastodon into Apache Kafka, and we are ready to bring the data to the next destination and put it into OpenSearch uh, database. How many of you are familiar with OpenSearch? Could you raise your hands? Okay, less number than a number of people who are familiar with Kafka. Um, how many of you are familiar with Elasticsearch? So OpenSearch is a fork uh, which was made from the latest open source version of Elasticsearch. Um, so why OpenSearch? Uh, OpenSearch is, uh, has an architecture which is actually pretty nicely combined with Kafka. It's also a distributed architecture. It scales horizontally pretty nicely. Uh, and it's also fault tolerant because we do the replication of data. Um, then uh, it's also uh, really fast. Uh, it is based on Apache Lucene, uh, which is a very famous uh, library for, uh, for search. Um, uh, supports full text search, uses uh, inverted indexes for that. Um, also pretty good at real-time search, so for monitoring, uh, for logging scenarios, for the scenarios where you have a stream of data like we do. Um, it has a lot of functionality for aggregations and analytics. And um, what is important for us, OpenSearch, is document-oriented database, uh, which means it's actually not a relational database, and this is quite important not to confuse those, uh, which has some pros and cons. But from the pros perspective, it means that OpenSearch is very flexible when working with semi-structured data. And this is type of data which we are getting from Mastodon, which means that sometimes we can get different types of properties coming for, for the activity. So, um, so we will use the power of open search to work with these flexible data structures uh, and also to actually um, create the schema for the data for us. Again, like when we are bringing this data and we are exploring it, we don't really want to go and start thinking what kind of properties we have there in Mastodon records. We would rather delegate the task to someone else, and that will be open search. So there are plenty of API and integrations, and as I mentioned, it is open source. When it is coming to integrations, um, Let's look at this from the perspective of Apache Kafka, because this is how we are going to integrate Apache Kafka uh, data stream uh, with OpenSearch. And Apache Kafka has a handy API, uh, Apache Kafka Connect API, which allows everyone to create our own connectors uh, and to bring the data either from some source, for example, from Postgres, into Apache Kafka topic, or from Apache Kafka to OpenSearch Redis, or many and many other uh, systems. There are like hundreds of existing connectors, and they are uh, so, so, like, so there is a bunch of code behind the connector, but the um, uh, advantage for those who want to use the connector is that actually you are just writing a quite short JSON file to use it. But so that you kind of understand how connector looks, this is a GitHub repository for open search uh, connector for Apache Kafka. And if you look at the source code, it's a bunch of Java, um, uh, Java code, and there is also tests. So kind of, it's. Um, uh, many of those connectors are good, high-quality stuff, which is actually already used by multiple uh, companies, so we can uh, definitely rely on them. And when you use it, um, uh, what we need to do, we need to get the kind of interface, and we have a bunch of properties which we can um, use to describe how exactly to connect our Apache Kafka cluster with another system, um, so, for example, this is my connector, and I know it's a lot of text, so you don't have to read everything. The most important is kind of like, here we are telling Apache Kafka cluster is like, uh, how exactly, so where to find open search, connect, uh, open search cluster, um, and then also which data to bring there. Um, so, and then uh, Apache Kafka 
uh, we will be like, so this connector takes responsibility of bringing the data from Apache Kafka topic into open search cluster into Mastodon index. Um, and uh, on the side of uh, like visual interface, um, this is, so I created a connector. There are plenty of other connectors I could have created, but for us, uh, we are interested in uh, the uh, open search one. I can restart it, stop it, and so on. And the data is uh, uh, coming uh, into open search. So I have an open search cluster running. So the um, connector will create the index. So I don't need to do anything on the open search side. It will create the index and start bringing the data. Um, so once the data is there, what we can do is to use a built-in possibility with uh, open search dashboards to start uh, visualizing and exploring the data. I mean, you can use also code if you want, but I will be showing with the visual tools um, uh, just for simplicity. Uh, so with that, we can move to step number four, analytics. And finally, answer that question, uh, what exactly Mastodon users prefer, uh, cats or dogs, or dogs or cats. Um, and for this, I created a dashboard um, in uh, open search uh, with the data which we get from Mastodon. And uh, I created this pie chart and I filter the data by the tag names, which include like different types of animals. And um, to those of you who love dogs, um, sadly that green part is actually responsible like for cats area. And the purple one on that side is the one for dogs. Um, so, yeah, apparently cats are more popular. Uh, and uh, just to show how it looks uh, from within, uh, the visualization here, I am uh, using the count metric. And what I'm doing, I am creating buckets of data. And here I'm like, okay, could you create a bucket where the tag uh, name has the word cats, dogs, uh, um, rabbits, puppies. So I try to find like kind of like the most popular animal stuff. Uh, so cats win. Um, uh, on the dashboard side, what we can do next, we can actually start filtering the data. So I can click on the dogs there. Uh, one second, yeah. So, and then uh, we will start looking at all the data uh, filtered here by the keyword dogs. And we can see that we have uh, 386 records uh, right now, which have the data. Um, then we can, by the way, football is super, super popular, even for dogs. Uh, so then we can see the images um, uh, for the records, the most, uh, uh, by, by the most followed accounts. Uh, and uh, some other information, for example, um, from where the users are coming, what kind of application they are using to send the data. Also here is like how many of the records or like of the posts created are from bots and not bots. So majority are not bots. Uh, the tag cloud, what other tags are associated with the, um, uh, with the dog, um, dog's uh, tag. And the language, language popularity. Since we are searching for dogs, it's like logical that majority will be mentioning this in English. So uh, yeah. Cats win. Uh, but keeping the story about the cats and dogs aside, uh, let's look behind the uh, scene, what exactly is happening there and how open search works with that data. Uh, and uh, for this, like when you start visualizing stuff, so the one thing which you will need to do on uh, dashboard side is to create a pattern. Um, it's pretty simple, uh, but it's just, uh, dashboard works with patterns and pattern can be it's like umbrella either is like one index and we have mastodon so we have only data within one index but for example you have your logs and you might prefer actually not to have one index with all log data but you will split it by month so you have logs for january logs for february logs for march and so on 
And then when you are uh, doing the um, dashboard uh, stuff, you can say, uh, you can create a pattern which will include all of those logs under one umbrella and a kind of do visualizations based on that. Um, and if you look inside the pattern, um, uh, when creating it, will identify the properties, uh, the types based on the schema. So actually, OpenSearch already did that uh, when it was uh, indexing the data. But here we can still see the properties uh, which are meaningful for uh, dashboards, uh, for, the, for the dashboard. And uh, we can um, change also some stuff about the data over here as well. For example, I know that some of the strings this is like account header, that it actually a URL which leads to the image. So we can uh, kind of specify and indicate to open search dashboards is like when, whenever you're encountering this property, uh, please show me an image instead of the string. Um, so overall, like the schema is quite important. Uh, this is one of the misconceptions which I hear often about open search is like open search doesn't care about schema and it's totally not true because open search really cares about the schema. It's just like if you don't provide the schema, it will figure it out on its own because it really needs the schema to uh, make all the aggregations and uh, search requests. Um, for example, this is a discover panel, and here we can look at one of the records, um, something related to photography and the moon. And we have different types of data. We have strings, we have booleans, we have integers. And if we want to send the requests to open search, for example, to get uh, the most, to, to get the uh, posts from the most followed accounts. Uh, that kind of like number of followers, uh, open search need to be able to work with it as uh, it is an integer. So like the type of the data is quite important. Um, also, we are relying on the uh, date and time here a lot because we have an actually a timeline of the data coming. Uh, again, this is because it knows that we are working with date and time. Um, but that uh, brings um, sometimes some pain uh, because um, how OpenSearch tries to uh, figure out the types, it will look at the record which comes, like the first item you sent, and it's like, so here we have aspect 1.5, uh, or below we have like some uh, focus values, uh, which we can right now clearly see those are floats, but in case the first value will come aspect equal to one, open search is like, hmm, so I am expecting here integers, and I will put this into my schema. And then when we get a float, well, you open search like, wait a second. Actually, it was supposed to be integer, not a float. Uh, and then you have error and you either can ignore those errors or you can actually modify the schema and you will have to re-index the data. Um, and this is kind of applicable to multiple different types. Even like if you index the text and you kind of like want to index it as an English text. Um, if you didn't do it at first, OpenSearch will need to re-index it later uh, to make the changes. So this is kind of like uh, pros and cons of having dynamic um, schema. Um, instead, you can actually clearly define the schema before you start consuming data. Um, and that will be is that actually what you should usually do for your production data? Because even though OpenSearch is great at trying to guess your schema, it still doesn't know your data as you might know your data. Um, by the way, this is like the mapping which we have for OpenSearch. And it's long. So for us, when exploring data, we don't really want to try manually create the schema. But we could actually kind of get this uh, best of the both worlds. So what we can do, uh, we can um, send the data to the cluster, to open search cluster, then get the schema which it defined, make any changes in what we need to uh, have in that schema, recreate the index and kind of bring the data again. And it's, um, 
it's it actually sounds more complex and it's actually it's not as complex as I made it I think sound um, so that's how you can work with the data uh, by the way this is dev tools which uh, open search has uh, and this is a place where you can also um, send the aggregation requests. This is the place where you can create your new index if you want. Uh, this is like where you can re-index data uh, and do many of those things. So uh, this is pretty convenient stuff and it's like average follower and average um, yeah, number of followers. Another thing which might be a bit tricky when we bring the data uh, from Mastodon through Apache Kafka into open search is like we need to identify somehow the data. So uh, they can be like internet is a dangerous place, stuff can be lost, uh, we need to might to retry to deliver the data and what we want to avoid is um, duplicates of the, uh, of the data. And for this, uh, what at least I did in this case, I specified the ID of the records which are coming into uh, open search relying on the exact location of the record in Apache Kafka. So here we have the mastodon is the topic, uh, zero is the partition number, and then we have the number, this is the uh, offset of the location. So it's kind of exactly knows where the data is located so that in case we need to restart our connector, we are not sure, like we want to deliver the data again, um, we can be sure that there will be no duplicates on open search side. Um, uh, because it will just ignore or rewrite uh, those data with the same IDs. What you can do here also when bringing the data from Apache Kafka to OpenSearch, you can do the transformation of the data on the flight. You can use some random actually values here for the IDs. So it really depends on the scenario, and this is where it goes away from being like just plug stuff in and it will be working to more knowing your exact uh, use case. Um, so yes, uh, this was kind of a demonstration how you can bring the data from Mastodon uh, to OpenSearch and do visualizations out of the box. There are plenty of other things you can do with this kind of combination, uh, but I hope that this uh, will help you getting started uh, with the most simple scenario. Um, with this, I wanted to say thank you for being at the session. Uh, oh, by the way, yeah, so the QR code uh, for the project in case you're interested in that code. Uh, and if you are dealing with multiple uh, open source data solutions and you have challenges with infrastructure, also check the website of amazing company where I work. Um, we offer um, the solutions which will help you run uh, the com uh, complete ecosystem for your data products end-to-end -end with all the integrations and so on. Um, and we actually recently introduced the free tier for the most popular products such as uh, Postgres, uh, Redis, um, and MySQL. So try it out and let us know how it goes. Thank you so much for being at the session and I'm all ears for your questions.